Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Assessor Reform Presbyterian Church as we begin our time today with a short devotion from Charles Spurgeon's Morning and Evening. And as we do so, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, you have created this day for your glory and for your people. And to God, we ask that you would open our hearts to receive your truth, that we might walk in the works that you have provided uh, from the foundation of the world. And to God, we pray as we seek your encouragement, your grace, and your love. Dear God, that your Holy Spirit would lift us up in your presence. And dear God, that you would watch over us uh, for all of this day. And that we might glorify you in all that we do. And by his blessed mercy, we pray. Amen. Well, this morning, we turn again to uh, Charles Burns' Morning and Evening. And today, we're going to be reading Zechariah 1.8 to start. He was standing among the myrtle trees in the glen. The vision in this chapter describes the condition of Israel in Zechariah's day. But being interpreted in its aspect toward us, it describes the church of God as we find it now in the world. The church is compared to a myrtle grove flourishing in a glen. It is hidden, unobserved, courting no honor, and attracting no attention from the careless gazer. The church, like her head, has a glory, but it is concealed from the eyes of the flesh. For the time of her breaking forth and all her splendor is not yet here. The idea of a tranquil security is also suggested to us. For the myrtle grove in the glen is still and calm. For this takes place while the storm sweeps over the mountaintops. Tempests spend their force upon the craggy peaks of the Alps. But down where the stream flows that makes glad the city of our God, the myrtles flourish by still waters and are unshaken by the impetuous wind. How great! is the inward tranquility of God's church. Even when opposed and persecuted, she has a peace that the world does not give, and that, therefore, it cannot take away. The peace of God that passes all understanding keeps the hearts and minds of God's people. Doesn't the metaphor forcefully picture the peaceful, perpetual growth of the saints? The myrtle does not shed her leaves. She is always green. And the church, in her worst time, still has a blessed covering of grace about her. Indeed, she has sometimes exhibited most vegetation when the winter has been the sharpest. She has prospered most when her adversaries have been most severe. Hence, the text hints at victory. The the myrtle is the emblem of peace and a significant token of triumph. The brows of conquerors were wreathed with myrtle and with laurel. And isn't the church always victorious? Isn't every Christian more than a conqueror through him who loved him? Living in peace, don't the saints fall asleep in the arms of victory. Amen. For good reason, Psalm 23 has always been at the top of the list of the most popular uh, verses and passages in the Bible that people long uh, to hear. And one of the verses in Psalm 23 is, Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. And when we think about that passage and we think about what the Lord is communicating in uh, those words, we are reminded of what Spurgeon says here. No matter the darkness, no matter the attempts of the evil one to draw us out, we are safe in the arms of the Lord. When Jesus Christ speaks of his love for Jerusalem, he calls himself a mother hen who guards her chicks. And when we think about that once more, again, we are reminded that If the Lord has given us his protection, as Spurgeon says, no one can take that away. We have nothing to fear from this present evil world, 
For even if it could kill our body, it can never take our soul away from our God and our King. So that's a testimony that we can take with ourselves today as we consider, again once more, the love of God for his church. Let's turn now to the evening reading, which comes from the 11th chapter of the book of Zechariah, verse 2. Wail, O Cyprus, for the cedar has fallen. When in the forest uh, there is heard the crash of a falling oak, it is a sign that the woodman is around. And every tree in the whole company may tremble, lest tomorrow the sharp edge of the axe should find it out. We are all like trees marked for the axe. And the fall of one should remind us that for everyone, whether as great as the cedar or as humble as the cypress, the appointed hour is fast approaching. I trust we do not, by often hearing of death, become callous to it. May we never be like the birds in the steeple, which build their nests when the bells are tolling and sweep sleep quietly when the solemn funeral peals are startling the air. May we regard death as the most serious of all events and be sobered by its approach. It ill behooves us to play while our eternal destiny hangs on a thread. The sword is out of its sheath. Let us not trifle. It is ready and the edge is sharp. Let us not play with it. He who does not prepare for death is more than an ordinary fool. He is a madman. When the voice of God is heard among the trees of the garden, let fig tree and sycamore and elm and cedar all hear the sound. Be ready, servant of Christ, for your master comes suddenly when an ungodly world least expects him. See to it that you are faithful in his work. For the grave shall soon be prepared for you. Be ready, parents. See to it that your children are brought up in the fear of God, for they will soon be orphans. Be ready, businessmen. Make sure that your affairs are in order and that you serve God with all your hearts. For the days of your earthly service will soon be over, and you will be called to give account for the deeds done in the body, whether they are good, or bad. May we all prepare for the tribunal of the great king with a care that will be rewarded with a gracious commendation. Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. So we close here with the evening passage. It can seem as if the morning and evening passages are almost at odds with one another. In the morning part, we heard of the comfort and security that we have in Jesus Christ and in the hand of our Heavenly Father. And here in the evening, what have we heard? We have heard of the warning call of the reality of death, that death comes for all men as long as the Lord tarries. <clears throat> and the seriousness in, with which men are to take uh, that end seems again to be somewhat at odds with the call uh, to be comforted in the hand of the Lord. But again, we see how they work together. Why are we to be making our calling and election sure, as the Apostle Paul says? Why are we to be found doing on the day that the Master returns? Why are we to be like the young virgins, uh, marking our, our wick in order that the oil does not run out? The call there, again, is to be active in the work that God has given to each one of us to do. The call there is to be found in obedience to the hand of the Lord. Remember what the psalmist says. Why should we fear no evil? Because thou art with me. But what are we doing? We're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. We're engaged in the labors that Christ has given to us. And while we're engaged in those labors, we must be sure that we are following the word of the Lord and that we are finding our peace and our comfort in him. And one of the ways we do that is through our obedience to the Lord in worship, 
You know, God has called us to gather together with our brothers and sisters in Christ on the Sabbath day and to glorify and praise his name, to show our thanksgiving for his grace and for the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ for our sins. And so as we return again our thanks unto the Lord, we do so because he is that God who watches over us and keeps us and cares for us in his love. May the Lord bless you today. May the Lord guide you through all things. Take care and God bless.